water. Clear, clean water. Man's greatest need, his greatest friend. In all of nature, the life of man finds tongues in trees, sermons in stones, books in the running brooks. In the depths of the woodland, the sweet, melodious voice of the brooklet sings its cheerful song. I come from haunts of coot and hern. I make a sudden sally and sparkle out among the fern to bicker down a valley. By thirty hills I hurry down or slip between the ridges. By twenty thorps, a little town and half a hundred bridges. This is the song of clean water, the story it wants to tell forever. The beauty of clean natural water enhances the charm and the value of property. Lovely homes are built beside entrancing streams or overlooking surf splashed beaches. We need clean water for the exciting, exhilarating sports of the great outdoors. Wildlife depends upon clean water for existence. And this kind of fishing is successful only in clean water. Clean water is essential for livestock and for irrigation. It is also necessary for commercial fishing. Oyster fishing. And salmon. types of freshwater fishing. Fish eggs need clean water to hatch. Fingerlings need clean water to grow into trout to challenge the sportsman's skill. From the beginning of time, our rivers, lakes, and the seven seas have been arteries of transportation. Factory sites may be chosen because of the availability of sufficient clean water, a vital factor in many industrial processes. And most important of all, our natural waters are the major source of our drinking water. In fact, 75% of our communities take their water from lakes and streams. Almost invariably, man settled near to water. He needed water for his domestic use.
for food production, for his industries, and for transportation. Being near water, his communities dump their waste matter, their sewage, into the streams for easy disposal, thus creating the serious problem of pollution. A problem which has grown increasingly serious as communities have increased in size. pride ourselves on our high sanitary standards, yet we deliberately make open sewers of our waterways. The clean, clear waters that were once so friendly and useful become contaminated and ill-smelling. Scum forms on the surface. At times, Streams may become so heavily polluted that foul gases form and bubble to the surface. Floating refuse lodges on shores filthy with layers of rotting wastes. In any form, serious stream pollution has had many injurious effects. Once attractive residential districts have declined in value. Bathing beaches and swimming holes are closed to the public. The germs of waterborne diseases, typhoid fever, cholera, dysentery, and other intestinal infections thrive in polluted water. These deadly sewage bacteria are frequently carried long distances by flowing streams, sometimes contaminating drinking water supplies and rendering them dangerous to public health. Remember that three-fourths of our communities take their water from lakes and streams. Livestock pastured near polluted water may become infected or poisoned. Germ-infested or waste-contaminated shellfish are a menace to health. Sewage-laden waters become depleted of oxygen to the point where they will no longer support aquatic life. A sportsman's paradise is threatened with destruction or has already been destroyed by the pollution of our streams. Polluted waterways hinder shipping befouling and rusting ships. Entire communities have suffered from hydrogen sulfide fumes from polluted water. These fumes are not only disagreeable, but are also destructive to the paint on buildings. Industrial plants needing a plentiful supply of clean water will not locate along polluted streams. All of these calamities are caused by the tremendous quantities of sewage and other wastes constantly poured into our inland and coastal waters. This takes a tremendous toll in dollars and cents annually. Here are some typical examples. Thousands of oyster beds are no longer available as a food source. The oyster industry during the last 10 years has dwindled to one-fourth its former size and oysters more than doubled in price because of pollution. At one time, millions of pounds of salmon were taken each year from 28 streams along our North Atlantic seacoast. Today, pitifully few of these streams yield any of this valuable food and game fish. In numerous places along our coasts, sea bathers are forced to travel many miles to find waters not contaminated. In one west coast area, 
An estimated 54 million additional miles are traveled each year by people whose home beaches are polluted. A beach resort on an eastern shore which cost $5 million and gave pleasure to thousands of people was made unfit for use as a resort because of pollution. The recreation and economic losses due to pollution affect the lives of every one of us. The United States Public Health Service says, pollution of our natural water costs the country more than $200 million annually, exclusive of many important intangible losses. All of these losses can be avoided through scientific sewage or industrial waste treatment. Both economical and effective processes. Raw municipal sewage, the collected wastes of a community, is channeled into disposal plants, where polluting materials are removed by modern, efficient treatment systems. Employing such processes developed by sanitary and consulting engineers and equipment manufacturers as settling tanks. Drying beds. and many types of filters. These complex sewage treatment processes are powered and controlled by modern electrical equipment. Switch gear, transformers, motors, and control. In a similar manner, industrial waste, the byproduct of hundreds of different commercial operations, is treated in special plants built by industries which are cooperating to eliminate this source of pollution. Such plants as this will assure clean waters in industrial neighborhoods. In either case, the exact process used depends upon many factors, but the final product is in all cases the same. Water which can be turned back into the stream without harmful effects. Clean water. But let us look at municipal waste disposal in more detail. Complete sewage treatment consists of two major steps, primary treatment and secondary treatment. The primary treatment includes the mechanical removal of solids which will settle out. It starts when the raw sewage enters the plant. In a typical plant, the sewage first flows through a mechanically cleaned bar screen which removes any coarse material that might damage the pumps or other equipment. The sewage then passes slowly through the grit removal basin, allowing the grit to settle up. From here, the sewage is lifted into a settling tank by pumps. These tanks vary in design, but the purpose is the same. Here the speed of flow is greatly reduced to let the suspended organic matter settle to the bottom. Sometimes chemicals are added to help sedimentation. The settled matter, called sludge, is pumped to an enclosed digestion tank. In the digestion tank, Helpful bacteria, which thrive without oxygen, reduce the heated sludge to a useful humus-like residue. This process generates a gas that may be burned to furnish heat or power to operate parts of the system. 
After digestion, the sludge is dried or dewatered. This may be done by spreading it on sand beds to dry by filtration and evaporation. It may be more rapidly dried by mechanical processes. A dried sludge is useful as a humus soil builder and fertilizer. But unless heat treated, it should not be used on vegetables that are eaten raw. These steps then comprise primary treatment, screening, grit settling, settling of solids, sludge digestion, sludge drying, and sometimes chlorination of the effluent. The secondary treatment includes the biological transformation of any organic matter remaining in the liquid that was drawn from the top of the primary settling tank. This liquid is treated in a filter which trickles over rocks on which live bacteria that thrive in the presence of oxygen. This may be done by any of several filtering methods which allow these oxygen-loving bacteria to oxidize the remaining organic matter and coagulate the solid matter into clumps which will settle out. Or it may be done by the activated sludge process in which large quantities of air are blown through the liquid to which a bacteria culture has been added. The effluent from any of these processes may be drawn off into a tank for final settling. The remaining liquid, after any further necessary filtering or chlorination, is a clean effluent, which can be discharged into a stream or body of water with almost all the dangers of pollution removed. Of course, to be safe for drinking, surface water from any source must be treated further in a modern water supply system. This successful transformation of raw sewage into clear, clean effluent is accomplished in especially built, especially equipped and efficiently operated plants that have been developed largely within the past 50 years. There were only 60 such plants in 1900. By 1910, there were 300. Their numbers grew until today there are over 6,600 plants in use. But in spite of this progress, treatment facilities are not keeping pace with the thousands of communities which are installing sewers. So today, our public health service officials estimate that there is a pressing need now for more than 6,700 new plants. And in addition, a large number of the existing sewage plants are inadequate. This great need for efficient waste and sewage treatment exists in almost every community. So long as we ignore this need, pollution will menace health, rob us of food, reduce property values, Take away outdoor pleasure. Destroy wildlife. And add greatly to the expense and technical control problems of providing safe city water supplies. Adequate treatment of sewage will eliminate these dangers, handicaps, and losses from pollution. Cooperative planning by the communities in your area will be required to coordinate and develop the broad programs needed for adequate sewage treatment along our waterways. 
The work of the Ohio River Valley Sanitation Commission is an example of this kind of cooperative action. In this program, eight states have banded together to clean up the Ohio and tributary streams of this area. Other interstate projects of this type have been equally effective. The construction of the many plants needed to satisfy the nation's present and future needs will furnish sound public works programs and will provide employment for thousands of workers. Authorities estimate that on a national basis, the saving of the $200 million lost annually as a result of pollution would very nearly pay the entire cost of the construction program. The result will be the return of our inland and coastal waters to their original natural state, so that they may again be unhampered in performing their natural functions in our industries, in supplying our food, providing recreational opportunities near home, the conservation of our fish and game, and caring for our welfare in many different ways. Then the voice of the waters, the surging surf, combing breakers, the tumbling, gleaming cascades of mountain torrents, the placid, deep-flowing rivers, the gentle lapping at the shores of inland lakes, will again find vibrant, joyous expression in the merry bubbling of the brook, and renew the age-old prophecy murmured by its clean, clear water. I wind about and in and out with here a blossom sailing and here and there a lusty trot and here and there a grayling and draw them all along and flow to join the brimming river for men may come and men may go, but I go on forever.